Hello! Welcome back. I'm Heather Mitz. I'm an independent stylist with Color Street and I'm here to train you a little bit on how to use a program that I added into the Trello board. So if you're not familiar with Trello, Trello is like a big sticky pad that you can use to organize information. So it's really just your whiteboard on your computer screen. Another cool thing about Trello is there is an app that you can download onto your phone. So not only can you have Trello on your computer, but you can put Trello on your phone as an app to keep up with whatever you've got going on on your sticky pad here. Um, so this is a uh, a board that I made for you guys to use called the fortune is in the follow-up and here's the thing with color street This is absolutely true. The fortune is in the follow-up when you are a color street stylist a lot of the things that you do is send out samples to customers and then have parties with customers that order as well as have individual sales and in order to continue building that business you need to make sure you're following up with those samples you send out and with the orders that are taken from parties and individual sales so this uh, Trello board that I'm going to walk you through on how to use yourself is going to be the key to making sure that you can successfully follow up without forgetting anyone or leaving anyone behind when you're running your business. So first things first, when you go to the link that I'm gonna post in the description, you want to make your own board. That's why I have right here this very first thing. It says start here, make your own board. When you open it up, all you have to do to open it is click on the picture right there and it's gonna open up specific step-by-step -step instructions on how to make your own board. The only way that you can make your own board is through your desktop or from your laptop but not through the app. The app doesn't work in the same, it doesn't have the same functionality as the um, desktop version, the website version. So go to your website first, make your own board and then when you log into your Trello app on your phone you'll see the board there. And so I'm going to show you step by step how to make your own board. It's really vital that you do that because like I said, um, you need your own board. This is a public board that everyone's gonna have access to to make their own board from. And if you don't make your own board and you make any notes in here, everyone's gonna see that. Um, I believe that I actually turned off the ability to even make any changes in here. So here's how you do it. Up in the top right hand corner, there's a little button that says show menu. And when you click on that, and then you click on more, there's a button that says copy board. and then you're and you can name it uh, really anything that you want. So for this practice, Heather's follow-up is what I'll name it. So I can walk you step-by-step step through what happens. Once I create my board, it's gonna go over here into this board section. It'll also open it up. So here it is. Now instead of it labeled, the fortune is in the follow-up, it's labeled Heather's follow-up. And it is now my board. I can do whatever I want with this board. You won't ever see it, I won't ever see it. Well, you will see it, but I won't ever see it and someone else won't ever see the board itself. It'll be a private board, you can see right here. It's private, it's just yours now. So you can make any changes or modifications that you want. Once you've done that, go ahead and click on these three dots here and archive this because you don't need to know how to make your own board anymore. Let's clean it up so you've got a fresh board for you to look at. And now the very first thing let's talk about is the first list that you can look at. And this is called the follow-up verbiage. The fortune, like I said, is in the follow-up. So when you click on this, this is a guide for you to go through on how you can send out follow-up verbiage to customers when they've ordered from you. It is a great way to stay in touch with them on a fairly scheduled um, time frame. So we call it the 222 guide. The first time you want to reach out to your customer that ordered through a party is two days after that party. And this follow-up that you're going to have with them is just letting them know how much you enjoyed meeting them, that you're their product's gonna arrive to them in about seven to 10 days. You can send them their tracking and just let them know that you really appreciate their order and you can't wait to hear more about what they think. The next time you follow up with someone should be two weeks after a party. This follow up is going to be 
asking them if they received their product, if they've tried it yet, if they have any questions or concerns, if they're excited, this might be a great time to ask about if they're interested in hosting their own nail bar. Um, but one other thing that I want you to always do when you follow up during this two week time frame is say something like this. I'd like to check back with you from time to time to make sure your nail strips are everything that you expect for them to be. Is that okay with you? Ask permission, guys. Ask permission if it's okay to follow up with them. Um, the reason that we're doing this is we're setting it up so that they know they're going to hear from us again. This isn't the last time that they've heard from Heather Mitts two weeks after a party. They're going to hear from me again in the future. If you leave out that bit of information and then let's say you follow this plan and two months later you're sending them another message, it might feel spammy. But if you set yourself up with the um, knowledge that you've told them you're going to be reaching back out to them in the future, they're going to know they might hear from you again. And, and it's really important to do that. It makes it more of a personal touch. So now, it's been two months since the party, and you're going to reach out to the, your customer again and just ask them how things are going, how their Color Street stash is, are they low on anything, do they need to place any new orders, and it's going to be a great time to tell them what's new with Color Street, because if you've been with Color Street long enough, you know we've always got something new cooking, right? We've got a new catalog, or we have a new release, or we have a new um, launch, or we might have something, a new uh, organization that we have strips to support. So we've always got something new that we can tell someone, especially every two months. There's always that... Uh, new release within a two month period. Since I've been uh, with Color Street in December, I've never gone longer than two months without something new I can share with the customer. So that's what you're going to find in here is just sample verbiage. So if you can't remember what to say and you're using your sticky notes here in your Trello board, you can come back and say, oh yeah, that's what I'm going to talk about right now. Okay. So let me close this up. I wouldn't delete it, I'd leave it. Um, if you wanna add notes or add another card with more verbiage that you like to use, verbiage that you use when sending, sam um, following up with samples, or verbiage that you like to use um, with hostesses, you can add a new card right here on this list so that you have everything all in one place. All right, so the next section that I made for you guys is 2018 parties. Now, if you're watching this and it's no longer 2018, or if you want to change this to something else, like your August parties and then your September parties, things like that, you can always change right here the date of, or the date, or you can give it a different name. All you have to do is click, and it'll give you the ability to type something else in. So if I wanted to label this, August 2018 parties. I just add that in, hit enter, and now the name has changed for me. When you open up the Read Me section, it's going to give you a lot of information on how I personally have decided to use this section. This is just guy, a guide and ideas. It is not set in stone that you need to use this area this way. Um, it just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea on how to use the follow up in the party section. Uh, the most effectively that I've found. And you might find a method that works much better for you. It, or you can delete it if you don't need it anymore. And then let's talk about what it looks like to use the party section. Um, so I've already added in Sally's party. Sally I had a party with on July 1st of 2018. And so I came in and I made her a card and I labeled the card with the date of the party and the name of my hostess. And then in the description, I talked about what happened during that party, how much the party sold, what Sally ordered from her party for her rewards, what her friends ordered. So you can see here that I added in all of the information on what they ordered and some additional notes. I realized that Susie booked a party, so I put in the date for that. Sarah ordered and she actually had kind of put some interest in there that she might wanna join. So I definitely wanna follow up on that. And what I did to make follow-ups easy is I created labels. So when you add a party in, you can also click on this label button, whether you're on your phone, on the app, or on the computer, it's the same place on labels. And you can click on some different labels here to label the party and give it some specific information that happened. Um, so I labeled it that it was a party order. There's a potential stylist in the group. There was a party booked from this party. And that's all that happened in this group. Now, if you have something else that went on that I already haven't created a label for, you can 
and type in here. So um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head because honestly I put a lot of work into thinking of all the labels that I wanted with this um, Trello board. But if you have something else that you want to keep track of, write it in here and create the label with some color so that you can always keep track of that specific type of event happening. Now, I set it up that I followed up with them two days after, two weeks after, and now I'm at two months after. And the way that I did that is I gave it a due date. You can click on due date here. You can do this on the computer on your app as well. And I said on this on September 18th, I am due for that two month follow up because I already followed up two days after, two weeks after, and now this is my two month after time frame that I'm gonna follow up with Sally, Susie, Sammy, Sarah, and Sierra. Okay and I saved that here. Every time you follow up with someone, you can come in and you can add some notes, like Sierra, Sarah loved her set, still considering joining, needs more time. And then I can also say something about Sierra, hasn't tried it yet, check back in a couple weeks. So I'm leaving myself some notes. So when I touch base with them on that two month follow up, I can come in here first and say, okay, this is what I talked to Sierra about. This is what I talked to Sarah about. And I know all the things that I've already said so that it'll give me a starting point to talk to them again in the future. I can save that comment. It's gonna go right down here at the bottom and it'll give me a flow of all the things that we've already discussed. And now let's say I have another party. My party happened today. Um, so it happened on 8718 and it's with Molly. So Molly's party and I'm going to click enter. It'll add that card but nothing else just yet. So what I'll need to do is come in here and give it a, a not a checklist, wrong button, a due date. I'll put it two days from today because we always want to follow up a couple days after the party. And then I will add some labels. I got some parties booked. I do have another potential stylist and I had some party orders in here. And then I'll just type my information about Molly's party and Molly's friends that ordered. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in this because it was on the other one. I can't even spell today. Molly's friend ordered, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then save that. I didn't even spell ordered right. Ignore my spelling. I do know how to spell. I'm just trying to type fast. And now I've got Molly's party here. Not only do I have that, but I have it showing that on August 10th, I need to follow up with these people. You can click on these three dots and sort all of your cards by due date. So now Molly has moved to the top because she's due first. Sally's due next. And I am now keeping a log of all of my hostesses all of the customers I've met through all of my hostesses, and I have started to schedule these two-month increments of when I need to follow up with these ladies so that I am staying in constant contact with them. Because the goal here at Color Street is to build customer relationships and then continue to let those customers know that you're still part of Color Street and you still want to be their stylist. Um, so, I mean, that's not the only goal of Color Street. The goal with this follow-up Trello board, I should say, um, is to make sure that you're still uh, in there, that you're still presenting yourself to them as a Color Street stylist, and you're staying at the forefront of their mind. And every two months is a great time frame to do that. Um, now, I also made an individual sales link that I did this. When you click on Read Me, it'll tell you more information about it is because I don't just get sales from my parties. I also get sales from my business page, my VIP page, random sales from the website. Um, sometimes I have friends locally come over and order something or pick something up from my in-stock and I still wanna follow up with them as well. They're just as important as these party customers. So here you can make a individual sales um, follow-up where you're following up with them individually instead of as a party chunk. And I just do the exact same thing. I write down what they ordered, when they ordered, how they ordered, and what I've done so far, and what's due to come. So this one, they ordered on the website. I sent them an email, or a thank you card. I always, if you order on the website, I always like to send a thank you card. Then I send them an email, and then I do some additional follow-up with them every two months, whether that be another card in the mail, 
or an email or through a Facebook message. It just depends on how I speak with them. I give them some more labels. This one also talked to me a little bit about maybe wanting to be a stylist. She placed an individual order and I'm adding in these due dates. Now if I come over here and I take care of this party early and I follow up a couple days early from when the two month mark is because sometimes I'm just on top of it and I do things a couple days early. I'll just come back in here and change the due date to a future two month due date so that I never forget to take care of my follow up with a particular customer. So that's how I use that individual sales list. My last list I have on here is my sample follow up and how I use the sample follow up is every time a customer requests a sample from me and I use Google Forms for sample requests and if you haven't seen how to make a Google Form um, I have that posted as well on my um, YouTube channel so you can just subscribe you'll be able to find it there on the channel um, and then you can make a Google Form yourself when I start sending out those samples same thing except on this how to read me section I have some additional verbiage as well down here um, so this, instead of the party verbiage that I use, I use this for samples. I ask them within a week, I send my first follow-up, and I send them a private message through Facebook or an email, depending on how they requested their sample, and I just ask them if they've received it and if they've tried it. I ask them if they have any issues or if they had any concerns with applying it, and we go from there in conversation. Once they talk to me about how they've tried it and what they think, I always ask if they're interested in hosting a 30-minute Facebook nail bar with me because that is where my parties stem from, is these samples. The fortune is in the follow-up. You send out the sample, you have got to follow up and ask them if they want to now have a party and share it with their friends. So I always follow up with this. If they decline but they're interested in shopping, I give them my link. If they decline but they might think about it later, I just set a new due date and I make sure that I reach out to them the next time Trello alerts me that it's time to follow up with them. So here's an example. Susie Sue filled out my sample request on 7-1 and I sent it to her. She checked on the Google form that she might be interested in joining and she might want to host a party. So I gave the label for potential stylist. You know, I should make a label for... Um, interest in party. So I'm going to make that a label and I'm going to give that the color of blue because I don't think I have a blue yet. Interest in party. So she, I sent her a sample. She's interested in having a party and she's a potential stylist. She's got all the labels right on here and her due date is past due. Um, I sent her a follow-up on 710 and now I need to send her another one on the 24th because on the 10th she hadn't tried it yet. So I just was going to give her a couple weeks and follow up with her again. Now this last time I talked to her and she said, I loved it. I'd love to have a party. Um, and so I'll just plan the party date with her and write in here, party booked for 8-15. Um, now I always start my party communication. Well, let's make this further out. 8-30. I always start my party communication with my hostess, all of my hostess coaching two weeks out. So if she's going to have a party on August 30th, I'm going to need to start talking to her on August 16th. So I'll set my due date for August 16th. And then what's going to happen is I've got party booked for 830. I'm going to save this. It's now going to tell me on August 16th I need to reach out to her. And when this alerts me, I'll be able to pull up Susie Sue and look down and see that she had a party booked. I need to start hostess coaching with her. You can use this Trello board and make it your own. You can add additional lists. You can add more cards. So when you have another sample that you send out, click on add card, add the name. Um, let's go with May. We're going to send a sample to May. And we're going to write in here that on today's date, we sent sample, whoops, it's not 10, it's 18. Sent a sample, once again, can't spell, follow up. Or sometimes I like to also put which sample I sent, sent up at the plaza. Because I like to say things when I send them messages, such as, 
Um, have you tried at the Plaza yet? That's the, the color that I sent you. Um, it's one of our solids. I love that color. It's a rose gold. Let me know what you think. So I'm now personalizing my first message to them instead of just this blank blanket message that doesn't have any personal connection. She also talked about maybe interest in a party. And I'm going to need to give that due date. If I sent it on the 7th, I will follow up a week from now. That's my hope that the mail will get there a week from now. Sometimes they say they haven't received it yet. And then I just postpone my due date and put it out for a couple days later. Save it. Oh, you know, I always forget to do this. I write stuff in and then I forget to hit save. So make sure you hit save or it won't save. And close that up. And now she's there. And now I'll want to sort this column by due date so that everyone pops up in the right order. And that is it, okay? So if you are a leader, you have a team, you could do um, team, a team building follow-up or team follow-ups and add who your teammates are in here and make sure that you're doing your coaching with your team regularly. So if you have a teammate by the name of, I like all the S names apparently, Sarah, and you've already done some coaching on their launch party, you can type that in the notes. And then you want to do additional coaching two weeks from now on something else, you can add that in all of their notes so that the next time you reach out to them, you know what you've already talked about and what the new things are that you want to um, let's see what else I can tell you about Trello before I hop off today. Now, I will be doing more training, so if you want to subscribe, you'll be able to get all these trainings to come straight to your email, or it'll just show up on your YouTube when you log in. You can, let's see, for settings, I have commenting permissions set to members. Once you make your own board, you'll be the member, so you'll be able to make comments on it. Um, I really think that's it. That I don't feel like you need anything else. I don't use anything else on here. Um, but like I said, you can log in to your Trello to this board from your phone app. So the phone app looks pretty similar. Let me see if I can pull it up and show you. Um, where's my Trello board? Here it is. Let me make myself bigger so I can show you. Oh, it's not. Hold on. Let me pull this back up. There we go. It didn't want to work when... All right, so I'm going to make myself a little bit bigger, and then I'll show you real quick what it looks like. I think that's as big as it's going to let me get. So when you come to your app, it's going to do the exact same thing. Everything that I've changed in here is already on my Trello app, and I, can, I have almost all of the same functionality on the app, that I do on the computer. The only difference is that I can't figure out how to copy a board from the Trello app so you have your own. So you the first go at making your Trello board, make it from your desktop. But that's it. So I hope that using this Trello board is life-changing for your business. It makes it easier. It makes it um, more routine so that you're actually getting your follow-ups done because ladies if you make sure that you follow up with your customers you are going to see continued success throughout your business um, so if you have any questions at all about using the Trello board or about my any thoughts that I have or questions that you have for me on how I'm using it just feel free to ask questions in the comments and I will get back to you on you know whatever you have or whatever you're interested in learning more about and thank you guys so much for watching today and have a wonderful rest of your day.